Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Shappy, and I've been known to partake in a little D&D. You've certainly seen my menagerie of informative videos, but did you know that I've also been a professional dungeon master for four years? In the cold months of COVID, I had nothing but the warmth of my computer's hard drive to comfort me as I cranked out five games a week for those lucky few who saw my ads on Twitter and Discord. It's only just now that I've realized, wait, why don't I advertise on my actual channel? So, now I'm doing that. You can click the link below to get the full spiel, but the cliff notes are that I run three-hour games of five players for a monthly $50 fee, and those games can be any pre-written adventure that I can get working on Roll20. 5e, City of Mist, even a little Pathfinder. I run whatever the party is into, and while my workload has me relying on pre-made modules, it doesn't stop me from altering those modules to implement your character backstory, or just make the books not suck, because some of them need it. I'm also 100% homebrew friendly, so if you've been dying to try out that custom class you found on the homebrewery, now's your chance! I've allowed complete overhauls of classes, races, I've even added plenty of homebrew rules to give a unique Davy experience to my games. The most popular changes include Exhaustion. If a player is at 0 HP and gets healed via any sort of magical ability, even potions, they gain a level of exhaustion to represent the lingering physical and emotional toll that being knocked unconscious puts on their body. This stops the barbarian from rushing in like a fool, dying, and then yelling at the healer to pick them up so that they can do it again. As an added rule to keep this rule balanced, all levels of exhaustion are removed in a long rest, because this isn't meant to be debilitating, it's just trying to keep the fights dynamic and ever-changing. Death saves are now a secret. This is one of those house rules that I thought was mean until I tried it, and now it's a staple. Not knowing somebody else's situation while they're bleeding out is anxiety anxiety-inducing, but in a good way. It makes players more likely to prioritize helping their downed party member, which means that the downed party member gets to play quicker. It also means that moments of getting a natural 20 or a natural 1 are extra exciting because they come as a surprise. Sorcerers now have the option of using spell points instead of spell slots. For those that don't know, there's an optional rule in the DMG that lets you liquidate your spell slots into a number of points that can be used to cast spells at certain levels. Doing this makes the sorcerer actually feel like a unique class of its own. It offers a much more flexible playstyle, and I let players use the points for their metamagic as well, which eliminates the glaring sorcerer issue of never having enough metamagic. After playtesting it went spectacularly, I now have this conspiracy theory that the sorcerer was always supposed to use spell points, but the 5e designers chickened out at the last second, which sucks, because nothing feels more like you were born with innate power than to channel all of your spell points into a massive Kamehameha. I've added plenty of other homebrew rules that you can read in the explanatory Google Doc, but suffice to say, my tables are unique games curated by years of experience. And if that's not enough for you, don't take it from me. Listen to the happy voices of my valued customers. Hey, how have you guys enjoyed playing in my game so far? It's oh fun. yeah, it's the so fun. Uh, All of the past characters that I've ever seen. Hey, thanks. So yeah, check out the link below if you're fiscally responsible enough to spend money on a YouTuber's D&D game, and you'll be put on the waiting list to be selected once a spot opens up. But yeah, Davy out.